What up y'all, my name is Danielle. Welcome to my channel. And you already know what the title of this video is, so let's just hop straight into it, shall we? Currently, I'm 23 years old, so it's officially my fifth year anniversary of being 18. Well, actually that was May 1st, which is my birthday. But anyways, the first thing that I wish I would have known before I was 18 is that comparison kills. So I've struggled with comparison for a very, very long time, pretty much as long as I can remember. And I'm just such like a naturally competitive person. So that doesn't make it any better, but especially being in the age of social media, like Instagram, death of me <laughs> before like I I can't even tell you how much I have compared myself to other people on Instagram just in my life yada 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 in general and something really huge that I've been learning this year um, is that the fastest way to kill something special is to compare it to someone else I was watching this sermon um, I'll have to link it below because I forget exactly where it was I think it was from transformation church but it was like a guest speaker and he was talking all about comparison right Right? And he just said something that sent me y'all and I'm gonna share it with you and I hope it takes you out just as much as it took me out in a good way. Okay, so basically what he said, let me, let me read my notes so I don't mess it up. He said um, something to effect that all of us have unique gifts and calling and a unique race and God is not gonna judge you according to anybody else's calling. I know a metaphor that a lot of people kind of like to use is that like we're all running our own race, right? And you have to win your race. And I know it might sound super corny and cliche, but I think it's actually really helpful to think about it like that. So for example, say that we are both singers. God just blessed us with amazing voices and we could just sing, okay? Not sing, sing. You know, say we're coming up around the same time and we're just trying to make it in this business, okay? So a lot of people would feel like that we need to compare ourselves to one another and try to compete and try to be better than one another and like if I'm not better than you then maybe I'm not somehow fulfilling whatever is inside of me but I think it's interesting because when you really break it down and think about it the cool thing that God does is like he creates a world around you like there's a specific amount of people that God has put in your world that are not going to be in your neighbor's world period. And so he wants you to be able to influence those people and to inspire those people and to use your purpose to help those people and reach those people in a way that that other person isn't going to be able to reach those people, whether or not they have the same gift as you or not. Um, I think a lot of us fall into the trap of chasing after things that God has never um, purposed for us in the first place. And it feels like we're just tirelessly and just getting exhausted from chasing those things that we were never supposed to have. But instead, if we focus on, you know, those things that God does want for us and that purpose that he has planted inside of us, then I think we could find that we would be so much more content and have so much more joy and inner peace. The second thing that I wish that I would have known before I was 18 is to save and invest, okay? I'm gonna say it again to the people in the back. Save and invest. <laughs> First of all, if no one has ever um, kind of helped you understand how personal finances work and just what things like saving and investing really mean and how they're beneficial for you, then I recommend you check out a couple of different resources. One, a book called Broke Millennial by Aaron Lowry, I think. And then a second really great resource is Anthony O'Neill. He works for David Ramsey, if you've ever heard of him. He's like, a, I guess, a financial expert, if you will. Um, but Anthony O'Neill has just a really amazing way of just explaining all things personal finances, of explaining how to build wealth um, and not just wealth during your lifetime, but generational wealth. So I definitely recommend that you check out those two resources. Again, I will link them below. For me personally, I always thought investing was something that like white, like top 1% of the nation did. But little did I know that literally your everyday girl, your everyday boy, your everyday person is out here investing their money. Like, sis. So I was so upset to find it out. But the good thing is that as young people, time is on our side. There is this thing called compound interest, and I need y'all to learn about it if you do not know what it is. It is so important. And that is how you are going to be able to multiply your money 
and make sure that it is working for you even while you're sleeping. Okay, real quick, some very tangible steps that you could do for this. If you are a um, young person and you're just trying to figure out, okay, how can I start understanding um, my personal finances and how to build wealth? One thing I need you to do is open a savings account preferably a high yield savings account, because that means you'll get more money back in interest and it'll just grow um, more over time. So definitely look into that. Make sure that savings account is also FDIC insured um, because if anything would happen to the country or to our economy, to that specific institution, you wanna make sure that your money is covered and that you'll be able to recover all of it, if not most of it. So really important. Also, um, very important to have an emergency saving. So an emergency savings, how much you put into it is really just depends on um, your specific situation. But I know that a lot of people recommend that you save up three to six months of your living expenses in your savings account for your emergency savings. And then last but not least, another tip for something that you could do is make sure that you open uh, an account for retirement. So whether that be a 401k with your place of work or like a Roth IRA or something like that, literally you don't have to be a certain age to open those things. You can be any age. And again, time is on your side. So the earlier that you open those things, um, the earlier that you open up yourself to just, again, collect more on that compound interest and really multiply your money over time. So yeah, look into all of those things. All right, so this next thing that I've learned might pluck a few feathers, but I think it's still important and I stand behind it 100%. And it is that finding a man or a significant other does not need to be your top priority, period. So your girl, when I was in high school, I didn't date whatsoever. So, you know, when I was 18, getting ready to go into college, I was like, yes, like I'm about to go into college. I'm gonna find me a man, I'm gonna find a whole husband. And that was mostly because, I mean, my parents met in college, a lot of my aunties and uncles met in college, and I just felt like that was the thing to do. Like, I felt like that had to be a priority. And a lot of my friends and stuff were saying like, oh, if you don't meet a boyfriend in college by sophomore year, like, you're probably not gonna have a boyfriend or like, leave with your husband in college. So I had like all this stuff in my head, watching way too many like rom-com movies, stuff like that. But yeah, I just thought that that was something that I had to have. But let me tell you, sis, I am so glad that I did not come out of college with a whole husband. Like for real, y'all, I think we had to spend more time being selfish. And I'm not saying selfish in the sense like you don't share your goldfish with someone or whatever. I'm saying selfish and like really focusing on yourself. Like I just feel like the society puts way too much um, pressure on us finding significant others and on getting married at a certain age and having kids and it's like yes I understand the whole situation with like your biological clock whatever 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 but I'm just like there is so much that you can learn about yourself as a single person you know there's so much you could do you can travel you can start a business you can move wherever you want to um, and really just take that time to invest in yourself and that's time that you really don't ever get back once you start getting married having kids like you always have to consider someone else or other people like i think a significant other they'll come you know what i mean like they'll always be there there's already there's always fish in the sea so to spend those um you know early years of your adulthood investing in pursuing other people and not investing in yourself i think it's just a mistake personally so if you're wondering why i'm going so hard for singleness it's because in college um i saw michael todd's relationship goal series now i know a lot of you have probably heard about this series because it's really popular um but it literally changed my complete perspective on relationships and on singleness and i am forever grateful for that series and speaking of it i actually have his book relationship goals and this will be our giveaway for today yay Woo! so in order to enter this giveaway it's super easy all you have to do is subscribe to my channel first of all i mean why wouldn't you? Um, second of all, follow me on Instagram. I will post my thingy probably here somewhere. Um, and last but not least, just comment below on this video one thing that you wish you would have known before you were 18 or before whatever age that you are currently at. That's all you have to do. And then I will pick a winner. Um, the winner will be announced a week from 
this video dropping. So this video will come out on Tuesday the 6th and the winner will be announced on uh, 13th, I believe. So yeah, make sure you enter it. I'm super excited to give this book away. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, next. I wish someone would have told me not to go broke over college. So let's get into this because there's a lot of things that I have to say about college, okay? On the lowest of keys, y'all, I, I used to kind of judge people that didn't go to college or that maybe dropped out of college. And I just didn't really understand it because I feel like, again, it's one of those things that society is like, you have to go to college. If you don't go to college, you're kind of less than or you just can't succeed. But now in the society that we live in today, I'm just like, yo, you don't really need to go to college. And honestly, thinking about it in like the field that I'm in, which is radio, television, and film, is what I went to college for. I really didn't need to go to college. <gasps> like, honestly, um, I've learned a lot just by watching YouTube videos and just kind of teaching myself like how to use a camera, how to do certain editing things about how to make like motion graphics and stuff like that. And I'm not perfect, but I'm definitely learning. And I definitely did not need to spend $70,000 a year for a professor to teach me those things. Like, don't get me wrong, I 100% appreciated my experience that I had in college and I learned so many other things outside of the field that I was interested in and I still think it was worthwhile, but I really wish that I would have taken more opportunities to consider schools that would have given me a full ride because I had the grades, had the GPA, had the test scores, all that good stuff. Um, and I low-key probably could have went to college for free and not been in debt. Also, speaking of student loan debt, another thing that I've learned is not to take out more money than you need. Because let me tell you, interest is a you know what. She does not play around. She's out here multiplying like bunnies. And yeah, it's just, it's crazy. So again, it's not something that a lot of people think about once they're in school. It's just kind of like, oh, I can get extra money. Let me take it. Maybe buy some clothes or buy whatever. But when you get out of college, let me tell you that money catches up with you. I can talk from personal experience. There was definitely some situations where I probably should have given back some of my money and I didn't. And now I have to pay off that money that I borrowed plus more. So it's just not worth it. Um, definitely look into some alternate opportunities. All right, ladies and gents, the last thing that I wish that I knew when I was 18 is that a relationship with God changes everything for the better, okay? Honestly, the reason I bring up this point is because the other day I was watching Netflix. Um, there's the show called Down to Earth with Zac Efron. And I don't know if y'all have seen it or heard about it, but basically it's him going around to different countries and seeing how they live sustainably. And when I saw it and I saw the preview for it, I was like, you know, why is Zac Efron doing this? Like it's Zac Efron, like he's an actor, he's successful. You know, what, what does he have to do with this? Why is he interested in this? And it's very interesting because in the show, he kind of gets into it and you know, he talks about how, you know, yeah, I'm an actor, yeah, I've been in Hollywood, um, but he never really felt like he contributed anything meaningful to the earth, which I thought was crazy because I'm like, sir, like you were in High School Musical, like that is one of the most meaningful movies of my childhood. There was something that he said in one episode and I'll paraphrase, but essentially he was like, what is the point of being successful without purpose? And that just like, that was a dagger in my heart. I was like, Zach, you are preaching to the kids because I think that's something that's so true and honestly so biblical. And I know that I kind of touched on this earlier, but I just want to reiterate the fact that God literally has a purpose and a plan for each and every single one of us. And personally, I'm a believer, so I believe that God's plan for us and God's purpose for us is better than any plan that we could ever think up for our life. And I can personally attest to that because Ever since I really just like said, you know what, I want to go hard for God. I really want to do my life with God instead of by myself. I have just had so much joy, so much peace. Like I feel like I've gained so much wisdom and literally I just feel like I have so much value and purpose and meaning in my life. And that is not something that I could have said when I was 18 years old. So, so thankful to God for that. I just want to say if you're out there and you've ever thought about, hmm, like what could a relationship with God look like? Why is it meaningful? 
like I would really ask you to consider it and um, I'm gonna link below a video uh, it's called grace like a flood it's actually the first part of a very long series but it is the thing that completely changed my mind and that made me say you know what I want to rock with God like I'm gonna do it and so I'm gonna link it below again I hope you watch it I hope that um, you get something meaningful out of it that's all I have for today, y'all, but definitely comment below and let me know some things that you wish you would have known when you were 18 or before you were whatever age that you currently are. I'm so interested to hear from all of you about that. And let me know if you're interested in um, seeing more of these types of videos. I definitely have a lot of things that I think I could have added to this list, but I was trying to keep it short for y'all. But also, last but not least, don't forget to enter the giveaway if you are interested. Like I said, I will be announcing the winner of that giveaway a week from today, so please do not miss out on that. Thanks y'all for tuning in. I had a good time. I hope you had a good time. And until next time, see you later y'all.